Well, it's about time. If you're happy in your career, if you're pleased with your job, and you get up every morning and all you want to do is get to work just as fast as you can because you're so happy to be there, then maybe this video doesn't apply to you. But if that's not you, then stick around. Well, all of us got to go to work. Oh, not quite all of us. There are a fortunate few that are independently wealthy and don't have to do that. But we all go to work. And some of us go to work to make lots of money. And their main goal in life is to earn plenty of money and maybe have a big retirement. Some of us are just going to work just to feed our kids. And uh, I kind of fit into the last group during my working career, just to have money to, to live on. But there is a third commodity beyond wealth and beyond putting food on the table. That commodity is time. I worked all through high school pumping gas. <laughs> Took auto mechanics, vocational auto mechanics in high school, which was uh, more in depth than regular auto mechanics. It was, it was to uh, get you a job as a mechanic. And right out, of, right after high school, I started working. I mean, graduate on Saturday and start work Monday morning. And that's what I did. I was really proud, ready to start work and be a man. So I started showing up for work every morning, eight o'clock, doing my eight to five. And after a few weeks, something started troubling me. <laughs> I asked the guys, I says, hey, how much time do we get off a year? He says, oh, he says, after one year, you get a week's paid vacation. What? <laughs> I work for 51 weeks and I get a week off. That's not going to work. <laughs> so when I started to work like that, I was, I was in shock. And it dawned upon me that life was serious. Not all fun and games anymore. Now we see a cave up ahead, but we got to be really careful because there's so many mountain lions in this area. But we're going to go up there and have a peek at that. So that's what we do. We work 50, 51 weeks a year for somebody else and... And if we're lucky, we'll have enough money to take a vacation, take the family out to have some fun. See the cave yet? It's just around the corner up here. Uh, a bit more of a cave here. That's a good place to seek cover in case it starts raining. I'll have to keep this one in mind. Careful, baby. Don't know what's lurking inside there. Well, back in those auto mechanic days in my late teens, early 20s, one shop I worked with wanted to experiment with something brand new. It was the four-day, 10-hour day work week. And nobody had done that before. It was just, you know, like I say, something new. But what they did is they had us work five 10-hour days, two days off, four 10-hour days, three days off, seven 10-hour days, five days off. Every third week, you had five days off. Man, I love that. But they told us, they says, if one person complains, we're scrapping the whole thing. Somebody complained. I wish I knew who it was. I think we'd have taken them out back and... Anyway... <laughs> But that was thoughtful of the company, I thought, to provide us with so much time off to be with our families and such. Up through there? Yeah. Yep, got to make a lot of noise. How oh, beautiful. Well, I've had many different jobs in my career. Some of them I hated, 
some of them I loved. But what I always sought was that time off. Time to do my thing. My last job, I worked for 14 years before I retired. I didn't like that job at all. I worked for a subcontractor and uh, he prov this subcontractor provided pilots to a big company I won't name. But I had two bosses. I had to please the big company who made it clear they didn't like us even being around most of the time. <laughs> and I had to please my, my company too. So it was one of those jobs. Not to mention, I worked 12 hours on call five days a week. And when I, when I got called, I'd be gone for 15 hours. Real high stress job flying in some of the nastiest weather in the United States, and that's Montana, all year round. So I stuck with that job for 14 years, but you know why? Three weeks paid vacation every year and every sixth week off. And you could put those together. So to take off on a three week road trip was something we did a lot. So I stuck with that job for the time off. And I was happy about that. Well, it looks like we made it to the top, yeah? I think maybe a slight slope up this way to the very top with the overlook. No sign of Sasquatch in Montana. He's too smart to live here. It's too darn cold. <laughs> Yeah, I liked all that time off, but after doing it for 14 years, the stress of being on call 12 hours a day finally got to me. Didn't do me any good to go into work in the morning with my heart pounding, you know? So, it was time to retire. Check this out. It's the rim off a wagon wheel. Back then they called these tires, by the way. It's around this tree. This tree's about, mm, looks to be about 20 inches in diameter. This has been laying here quite a long time. Here's part of the wooden rim right here. Still got the original rivets in it, huh? How cool. So, did we retire with New cars and a big house, money in the bank? No, but we have enough. That was the main thing. Now I got a lot of free time, as long as I be careful with the spending, <laughs> but we're able to get out and do things, finally. So kind of the way I saw it was, beyond paying your bills and putting food on the table, if you're so blessed to get to that point, you can choose quantity or you can choose quality. I chose quality. I'm a lot happier now for it. <laughs> you know, when you're walking through the woods like this, you got to keep turning around looking behind you. <laughs> Mountain lions like to attack from the rear. They also like to attack from the rear and high, like if you're walking along a hillside. But periodically, check your six. Another good reason for looking behind you, though, is to try to remember what it looks like going back. If you've got to do a return on the trail, turn around, look behind you, and so it doesn't look abnormal to you when you turn around. That way you might not get lost. Yeah, I'm not telling you how to live your life, but this is what, what we did, and we, looking back, we're really happy that we were so blessed. Spent a lot of time together doing a lot of fun things. We all have to chase after the money. We all have to pay the rent, and pay the mortgage and put food on the table. Uh, I never, Linda and I never bought big things. Uh, we tried to, we pretty much lived our life. In fact, I did a video on this. We lived our life debt free. From the time we first met 46 years ago, we've been debt free. So you can do that. <laughs> and of course, if you're not beholden to the banks, then you got a lot more free time, which was our goal from, from day one. So I guess if I could say one thing, it would be in your life planning, don't forget to plan spare time. One way I did that was for a lot of years, Linda and I, in our most happy years, we worked for ourselves. 
uh, we had our own company and we just work for ourselves and don't have too many employees, that uh, tends to take the spare time away. But basically, uh, if you're working for yourself, then you can plan ahead and take time off too when you decide. So if you can possibly work for yourself, I would say that's a good idea. Someone at some time built a shelter here. Long time ago. Yeah, there's a whole stack of wood back there. This is what it looks like from the other side. It used to go way back in there, but uh, that's all collapsed down. Looks like a person could sleep in there comfortably overnight or something. This was probably built back be before the term bushcraft came about. <laughs> well, we made it up to the top. That's good for these old bones. <laughs> of course, Linda's young. I'm the old one. <laughs> Beautiful view. So I know a lot of you are probably thinking, well, that's what retirement's for. You work hard and you save your money and you retire. And I know a lot of my audience that I'm speaking to is retirement age or, or getting there quick. But what I'm trying to tell you is you need to enjoy it along the way. Because sometimes when you get to that retirement age, you can't do anything. I mean, you're physically incapable of doing the things that you would have done if you had had chances to do it earlier on in life. When I was, uh, when Linda and I were, oh, just after we were married, we bought a sailboat and an ocean, you know, 28 foot, not big, but we wanted to outfit it for ocean sailing and we did ocean sailing. We went far down the South Pacific and everything. But when we first bought that boat, my father told me, he says, you're supposed to be working on a career right now. You're not supposed to be throwing everything aside and taking off like this. And I told him, I says, Dad, I says, if I wait until I retire, I might be too old to do this. I might be physically incapable of doing this. I need to do it now. And he agreed with me. And he was uh, happy about it after that and helped us out a lot. <laughs> good, good old dad. Well, what we ended up doing was making a lot of spare time along the way. <laughs> <laughs> raised some kids and had a lot of fun too yep well i hope you guys enjoyed this video coming along with us on this hike it's time for us to head back down now so <laughs> what do you say yep uh what do you say at the end of a video please like and subscribe and hit the share button yeah <laughs> <laughs> thanks a lot see you around Bye.